Hi everyone, Stepan here. In today's video I'm going to continue the series on the Catalan opening. Uh, we are still covering the open Catalan and out of the nine moves that we are going to cover in the separate videos today, we are going to go over bishop e7, which is one of the rarest lines and the move that not even Boris Avruk mentions. And if, if you've ever studied the Catalan, Boris Avruk is one of the biggest theoretical experts. Uh, and he doesn't devote a chapter to this move, and he does devote uh, a chapter to all other moves. I still wanted to include this move because it's very tricky for white to play against, and black has a very simple plan he could go for. Okay, so other moves that are possible, and we have covered some so far, we have covered b5 and knight bd7. Uh, black could also play a6, which is the main move, knight c6, c6, c5, and bishop to d7. So we are going to be looking at all of those moves today. Let's focus on bishop e7. So what's the idea of bishop e7? Well, firstly, the Catalan is an opening in which black often tries to keep and keeps his extra c4 pawn after d4, knight f6, c4, e6, knight f3, d5. Again, other move orders are possible. Watch the introductory video if you haven't. And after g3, dc4. And now white continues with bishop to g2, uh, simply leaving this pawn b, seeing what black is going to do. When black plays bishop e7, he is saying, well, I'm going to develop my king side sensibly. I'm not going to run into any trouble with my king. If you want to, you can spend some time and take the pawn. And that's exactly the choice white has here. The first option I should mention is that the most common move white castling and after that black castling actually leads to the closed Catalan. Closed Catalans are positions in which black doesn't take the pawn, which may seem confusing at the moment. I'm going to show you what I'm talking about. So if, for example, after the move g3, black doesn't take d takes c4, but instead plays bishop to e7, this is now the closed Catalan. And after bishop to g2, now the, one of the most common moves is d takes c4, much more common is to castle, so black castles, white castles, this is by far the main move, and now 10,000 games with d takes c4. We have now entered the closed Catalan with d takes c4, which is the main, 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 main line. We have just reached it via a different move order. So again, in the bishop e7 open Catalan, after g3 black takes, going for the open Catalan, white plays bishop g2, black plays bishop e7, and now if both sides castle, we have transposed to the closed Catalan. So this is going to be covered in a separate video. After I finish covering the open lines, we are going to go over the closed Catalan in a long video, and the emphasis is going to be on this exact position. So I'm not going to go over that in this video. The important thing to know is that if against the uh, if in the open Catalan on move 5 black plays the move bishop to e7, you can choose to transpose to the closed Catalan with simply castling. And if that suits you better, you can do that. Today we are going to go over the only alternative to castling and going into the closed Catalan, the only way to stay in the open Catalan with bishop e7, which is arguably more promising for white, and that's to simply take this pawn. Since black has declined to defend it, let's take the pawn. So the move is queen a4, check. Okay, now wh whatever happens, and black has several ways to play this position, uh, he can play knight bd7, bishop d7, or knight c6, which is uh, quite rare, but can be played. Uh, whatever happens on the next move, on move 7, white takes the pawn back. Okay, so we are looking at three options. Uh, the most natural move is knight b to d7. Um, my favorite from black's perspective is bishop d7. Knight c6 is quite rare, and I'm going to show you why before we get into theory. So, let's just briefly have a look at this position. This may be confusing at the moment, but it's a position we will often reach in the bishop e7 line of the open Catalan. So, what's going on? Well, uh, and we are going to get to this step by step, but what happens is, once white has captured the c4 pawn, black has time to go for a6, b5 and chase the queen away. After that, after the queen retreats, black's main break in this position is the move c5, 
Of course, black doesn't want to keep this pawn on c7, where it can be a target. Also, if white take this, takes this pawn, the pawn structure is going to be symmetrical. White has a slight space advantage because his pawn is on e4 instead of e3, but the position should be equal. And this is the key moment. Uh, black gets time whenever white takes the pawn back on c4. So, before we get into theory, let's just focus on this position for a second. The reason why I said knight c6 is not a common way to cover the check is because knight c6 blocks your c-pawn and you have to know exactly what to do to get that knight out of the way and to get in c5 nevertheless, which you have to get in. So, a couple of options in this position, and again, we are going to get to this, but let's just focus on it for the moment. One option, and the most common option, is to advance with d5 for white if you want a slow boring symmetrical position with two to two on the queen side and four on four on the king side you can take it's not a mistake it's just not the most active move and after knight takes you can retreat the queen back to e2 now the problem is the knight has the b3 square black has very nice bishops the pawn structure is symmetrical black has more space on the queen side and it should be equal. The other option is to advance with d5, and here we reach the critical uh, position I would like to discuss. Here, black has two options, either taking or, or advancing with c4. Much more common is to take on, on d5, and uh, advancing with c4 gives black a very nice pawn majority on the queen side. So this is, in a way, a critical position you will often reach in bishop e7 lines. What you have to remember is that these two pawns are most likely going to be traded off and white is going to have a 4 to 3 on the king side. Black is going to have a 3 to 2 on the queen side. Now, that may no, not seem relevant for the moment, but in any end game, black, as you can see, will be much quicker to create threats with his pawns. As John Nunn said in uh, Understanding Chess Middle Games, when he criticized Max Juve and Mikhail Botvinnik, a pawn majority in itself is not enough to win a game. You have to combine it with other advantages. Often you will have to trade it for a different type of advantage, but it is an asset black has. So now let's let's go back to the to the position after bishop e7, queen a4 check. So as I said, three options. Knight bd7, bishop d7, and knight c6. Knight c6 is the most unnatural looking move because it blocks the c-pawn. Nevertheless, it's a good move and there's uh, there's a, an idea behind knight c6. So white takes the pawn, black castles, unpinning, white continues knight c3, white could also castle, it will transpose. And now the idea is knight a5. This is how you get the knight out of the way. We often see this in, in Nimzo Indian type positions that th this knight usually attacks the pawn on c4 in this case attacks the queen the queen retreats back to d3 it could also go to a5 in which case uh in which case after queen a5 uh whoa whoa excuse me uh in which after in which case after queen a5 you can again play c5 and the queen defends the knight playing b6 uh, I think is well is possible because after something like knight e5 you can play bishop b7 but at least you lose the bishop pair after bishop b7 knight b7 and knight c6 so I wouldn't wouldn't advise that you have to be precise so if queen a5 if queen a4 excuse me then c5 again a much more common retreat something that we will often see in these lines is queen to d3 after which black breaks with c5 so black used his knight to gain a tempo on the queen and instead of which we are going to see in two other lines playing a6 b5 he achieved that in basically one move uh, white now castles and black now has a choice um, he could either advance which wouldn't be good in this case because it's not supported by a pawn or he can trade and after the trade knight takes bishop to c5 bishop to e3 is slightly awkward after e5 but after knight f5 the position should be okay for white queen takes d3 pawn takes d3 bishop takes f5 and bishop takes c5 and it should be equal uh, even though bishop d3 rook fd1 can be played after rook fd8 b4 uh, white is perfectly fine uh, slightly better according to the engines after knight c4 bishop b7 or knight c6 so an equal position 
pretty much for the moment uh, black is a pawn ahead but that can be regained with for example b5 in this position so it's not possible to hold on to the pawn so against knight c6 i don't think white should well be afraid just remember that uh, after c5 you can accept this bishop c5 line and bishop e3 and isolate your d3 pawn because you're going to get the the b7 pawn back okay now uh, a far more sensible move considering what black is trying to do is to play bishop d7 again white's response is identical queen takes c4 and now we are sort of in rubinstein french territory because there's this pawn structure the only difference is that for some reason white has fianchetto with his bishop so in rubinstein style bishop c6 developing this bishop to allow the diagonal now what you have to bear in mind if you play bishop d7 which is again why this is not the main line is that in order to equalize the game you will have to retreat this bishop and play bishop b7 eventually and then c5 because again if you don't play c5 white is going to have huge center control after something like knight c3 castles rook e1 e4 e5 okay so black doesn't want that to happen basically if black doesn't get in c5 in time then I'll just show you an example of passive play. So castles, castles, let's say rook e8, let's say rook e1, let's say knight d7, which is a dreadful move, but now e4. And black is pretty much in trouble, almost lost, I would say, because he has no counterplay, his, his rooks are out of play, he has no space, he has to save the bishop. If, for example, b7, then e5, and knight d5, and you can, well, you can play knight e4 here, go for a straightforward attack. Okay, sorry, I left the bishop hanging, not b not b6. I don't even know what, what to play here. Maybe knight b6, I don't know, seems dreadful anyway. So basically what white is trying to do, he's trying to activate his pieces and get a broad center. What black is trying to do, he's trying to break open the position with c5 and neutralize white's central control. So in this position, uh, white is going to castle, black is going to castle, uh, white is going to play knight c3, and now the way to play this position is to play the move a6. Okay, after a6, uh, black is preparing b5, and black is preparing bishop b7, and then c5, reaching a position very similar to what we saw previously. So, in this position, the queen moving away in anticipation of b5 is the correct way to play. b5 happens, and now it's important not to allow this knight to be chased away to d1, b1, because a4 is covered, e4 is covered. If b4 is played, then you basically lose, so you have to play a3. Now a5 would lose a pawn, so black cannot reinforce the threat. He develops with knight bd7. And after rook d1, we have transposed to the position we saw previously, bishop b7, e4, c5. And now again, we have this choice of playing d5 and taking. If d5, black again has a choice of playing c4 or, or, playing, uh, or playing d takes e takes d excuse me so now let's have a look at the two options if c4 is played black is perfectly equal white has one asset in this position he's going to isolate the e6 pawn and there's no way for 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 black to avoid that favorably white plays queen e2 and now if a trade happens then white is just going to have huge control so black's best is to play bishop c5 and start developing because this queen is dangerous this rook is dangerous so after bishop c5 d6 f6 and bishop f4 now again the position should be equal black's bishops look great much better than white's for the moment in fact black has great control over the dark squares in the center and on the queen side but his pawn is isolated, so we can start poking at the weakness. Queen e7, bishop h3. h6, for example, if it's played, then knight h4, going looking into g6. Now, the engine is going to tell you that this position is slightly better for black. But this reminds me of the main line Karo Khan, where the engine likes black, but then black gets mated very often. So that's what happens if c4. I think c4 is a very good option for black. It's going to be harder for black to play because of this isolated pawn and because white is controlling the d file but if the pieces get traded off if black defends successfully then he should be slightly better
The other option after d5 is to simply take. And now we have a forcing line, which is one of the main lines of the bishop e7, open Catalan, where after pawn takes d5, white doesn't simply take back because, well, okay, two defenders and the knight coming to b6, but instead plays e5. And now black has nothing better but to play knight e4 and give up this pawn with knight takes d5. Now, of course, the tactics work for white because knight takes e7 is always an option and the knight is attacked. So knight b6, black is forced to trade, knight e7 check, queen e7, and now a little tactic, bishop to g5 is the main move. The idea is, of course, that the b7 bishop is hanging at the end of the line, so knight takes g5, uh, excuse me, knight takes g5, Queen takes g5 and bishop b7, and this should be slightly better for white. If, for example, rook a7, trying to save the a6 pawn, then you can play f4, and the queen moves, for example, to e7, and here, and g6. And this is very nice for uh, for white indeed. If, for example, rook a v8 is played, then you can take on a6, and you, you're up a pawn. So... After d5, I actually think it's easier to play c4 positions for black than, than, uh, than e takes d. That's bishop to d7. Now, after queen a4, the, the main move is knight b to d7. And this move is, I would say, easiest to play against for white. You again just take on c4. Black again goes for his main idea of a6. Now, if you don't retreat the queen in anticipation of b5, then b5 happens with tempo. So you move the queen away to c2, and now c5 happens. And black has achieved what he wanted. Uh, white basically has no way to defend this pawn. Uh, again, black has no way to attack it. Black has the option to trade this pawn. If b5 is, is played, then you can take. And, of course, uh, white castles simply develops. In this position... Taking on c5 instead of castling would actually help black control a bit more of the board and get this bishop to a better square. So you can see that once b5 and bishop b7 happens, these bishops are going to be great. So instead of that white castles, black castles, you play rook d1. In exchange on d4, bishop c5 attacking the knight. The knight develops to c3, something like queen e7 and h3. And... Unfortunately for white, in the main lines after, after knight bd7, this is what you get. You get a position in which you definitely have better pieces. You definitely have better piece activity. And this has been played about 10 times, so it's not as popular as other open lines, but you still have to know it. The problem is that even though white has slightly better pieces for the moment, h3, by the way, to, to stop knight g4 and, and trouble here, uh, the pawn structure is symmetrical, so should pieces be traded off, it's going to be equal. Now, for example, rook e8 or rook d8, let's say rook to d8, you can play knight to b3, attacking the bishop, bishop to d6, for example, bishop to e3. Black could, for example, play rook b8 and b5. It's sort of similar to a Sicilian, but this bishop is still a problem piece, and for some reason the queen is on e7 and the bishop is on d6. So yeah, it should be equal, but white has better pieces once you get out of the opening. So that's bishop e7. So again, after bishop e7, if you castle, you are going into the closed Catalans, which I'm going to cover in a separate video. If you are watching this a week from publishing, then it's already in the playlist. Or you can play queen a4 going into these lines where you recapture the pawn. Again, the defenses are knight bd7, bishop d7, and knight c6. You have to know all three. Thank you for watching. Hope you got something from the video. Tomorrow we are continuing with more popular lines. And hopefully at the end of the series you will be an expert on the cattle. Thank you for watching. Stay tuned for more chess. Bye-bye.